So, only thing is that I'm recording each and every segment, each and every session. So, I would upload the class lectures. It's not that I you know, the very end of the class, but I usually download that one, but I used to forget that one to customize that thing. But oh, so I think most probably I uploaded the recent videos, all the recent videos. So now, today, we are going to talk about something like this yeah. computer literacy both you have to complete although your this session will continue till November I think but however you have to complete that one as much as you can cover your syllabus is already trimmed down or truncated to 50 percent so So let's go for this one. There is a computer literacy, but right now you just tell me that one regarding computer literacy. So far as my knowledge goes, I talked you something regarding the different types of software. Okay, the different types of software, and specifically I was talking about whether I have one. So the last thing, most probably this was the last. Uh, video I am having. Hello. Yes. Okay. So I was talking about the categories of software. Categories of software, that is the uh, application software, categories of application software. So today, I'm extending that very idea, the categories of software. I'm not going to tell you about the different categories of software right now because uh, in detail. So software is there and many of you are uh, using software, many of you are having some bit of knowledge of programming and you are most probably doing the software. Uh, so doing in what sense? You did something by using C or might be some of you have used that one, the object oriented programming or some kind of uh, programming software that is visual software like which is known as RAD, Rapid Application Development Software. Uh, many of uh, I do not know whether to use that one. And at the same time, we have something like uh, you see right now what is happening. Okay, let me start with this one. So, if something is in front of you, it would be better for you to understand. So, let me present my entire screen fast and then I think we are getting this one and then we are here and this one. So this is what the software literacy we were talking about and this is a part of computer literacy our PhD coursework program of this session. Now, I told you that one that is regarding different software at the same time what software is and regarding software I told you that one the application software as well as the system software operating system and regarding operating system what is the system software and how the system software and system utilities are system software and system utilities are rather together uh, coming together or many a times you can segregate the system utilities to only the core you can get and at the same time i told you something like you see that is the open source software as well as the closed source software like windows so although the open source content was not covered fully 
but uh, I think mm, we just touched a bit uh, the commercial softwares are there as well as the open source software, freeware open source software are also available and different types of system software like Linux, Windows, Windows, VEOS, QNX and Sun Solaris and the different distributions of Linux or other Linux clone. So what we really need to know as a researcher, that is what does all this software mean or what does, what do all this software mean? What do all those software mean means? So we have a pool of software and most of the Windows software, they are having some bit of similar interface the file menu one menu is there the file then edit menu then view menu like that different menus and each and every software or rather the categories groups of softwares are there they are developed for doing one kind of job one kind of job now one kind of job in what sense so see what processors are there at the same time you have the library management software at the same time where the research softwares are there at the same time the statistical softwares are there so softwares the varieties of categories are there at the same time within a particular category uh, different uh, softwares are there from the different vendors different um, developers and many of the softwares are doing the same thing and some softwares are having some bit of ages over others. So regarding software literacy, what we really need to know or what is software literacy itself and how it is related with uh, computer literacy. So in definition, we are saying that one, a person's expertise in understanding, expertise in understanding, applying, problem solving, and critiquing software in pursuit of particular learning and professional goal. That is known as software literacy. Software literacy doesn't mean understanding of all softwares under the sun, whatever the software developed in what particular category and what particular purpose. This is not the very goal of software literacy. The very goal of software literacy is that your expertise in understanding, applying, problem solving, critiquing software, critiquing software in pursuit of particular learning and professional goal. So your goal is what right now? Your goal is immediate goal. If you say you have two goals. First goal, immediate goal is to complete your research, that is the first goal, the immediate goal, that is the research. And the second goal is, and the second goal is your sustainability in the profession. Now, first goal, why I'm saying that one? So if you even do not do research, so there is a question of sustainability in the profession. So first goal, obviously the first goal should be the mm, this one, the sustainability. But I'm saying this one as because you are directly right now, you already started your the very beginning or rather the early journey for research. So that's all why I'm assuming that one, that is first and foremost thing is that you have to know being one researcher or being one potential researcher, it is your responsibility, it is your duty to understand a software that can help you to learn something and it can help you to achieve the professional goal. And see, not only the software by which you are doing something or a software which is developed for a particular job, but how you can extend the software for doing more job, how you can reap the utility of the software by exploiting its advantages that are not being seen by others. So this is what, this is the perspective of software literacy. So software literacy is not only like that, knowing how the word is being used, knowing how a particular software like Excel is being used, 
it is something more to exploit excel for each and every activities or even rather when the excel is not considered as the software for that business you are applying that one to reap the hidden benefit of the software that is actually software literacy something the problem solving critiquing and the second goal that is the software literacy so second definition is a key part of digital literacy as you know that one digital literacy is the umbrella term under that one you are having the software literacy in which all contemporary students and citizens need to understand you are the citizens as well as students so now for the second thing so first two definitions are for your research purpose and the second one that is the core that is for your sustainability what is software literacy involves a critical understanding of how the afford affordances and conceptual approaches of everything from operating systems creative apps and media editors to software based platforms and infrastructure work to inform and shape the ways we think and act this is nothing but the way human being human agents are thinking human beings are thinking the way of their thinking and how you are reflecting your thinking process within the software world within the software domain and for for identifying your ideas and at the same time you are capturing your ideas and with that one you are developing the creative apps based on your thinking so that the effort the human effort is minimized at the same time the time is or rather the time factor can be reduced that is the software literacy so it is having a critical understanding of that one so i will tell you the example of it critical critical understanding of it and approaches so everything from operating system what you can do with the operating system which operating system now here you see you can say that on the software literacy and unless i understand that one i understand windows well i understand linux well uh, basically for the time being i understand those these two operating systems very well it's okay but now you see whenever you are trying to implement this one in your library for your sustainability i'm talking about the second one that if you are sustainable in the profession now might be you are very much proficient in windows environment or you are adept in most of the tools but you see the library domain or the library science this particular discipline is uh, right even to today we are seeing that one the open source as well as the linux based system they are having more importance than that of uh, non linux based software as for example whenever you were talking about koha whenever talking about dispers whenever you were talking about dinstor whenever you were talking about folio and every time you were talking about the different library management software and which are the mostly you can say most acclaimed software in our discipline these are developed on the linux platform so in this case even you if you if you pray for windows you won't have any other option but to learn linux so that is what here is the critical understanding you have to understand that one that is which particular software is suitable for your domain and which software you have to learn which software you need to know and how what are the different intricacies there in what are the different difficulties there in as for example for installation of koha you know most of the cases in linux uh, software installation is rather a kind of pain it's not like windows that just you are double clicking setup exe and just cl by clicking 4 to 5 next you can get the software installed in this case what is happening 
you have to issue lots of commands in the command line in, in interface through the command line interface and going over there each and every time you have to see the output and once the previous output is fine it is giving you the positive result then only you can issue the second command so this is what so what is coming after what and why the first command was there why the second command is there and how each and every command is having a sequence why we need to apply or need to go for the software commands one after another so these are rather the involvements in software literacy and this is your sustainability also as for example right now you see the big data these are the jargon of the time and everyone is talking about big data people are saying that one big data analysis if you see the library literature lot of people uh, librarians as well as the library science faculties library science students research scholars they are writing lot of things regarding big data and even in big data different softwares are available most of the software these are freely available big data analysis software but obviously there is also the problem of understanding of that one because each and every software is doing their functionality in different way so but if you know the core core means what the critical understanding how these affordances and the conceptual approaches of everything everything means what what are we are having in the digital domain like operating system creative also and how these are working with as our thinking that is how we are implementing so each and every time whenever i talk about computer i always say that to you computer is nothing but a device like the human body or human system in human system whatever you are computer system is just rather a replication of that one only difference is that we already made that one as a monster in the in case in the time in the in the, in the side of memory or in the side of uh, you can say the hardware or storage otherwise the brain and all other things these are just like the human beings and you can say that one this brain but whatever the brain it is having that brain is the artificial brain that is the human made brain so the processor only thing is that it can do something very clearly because there is one unit known as ALEO that is algorithm that is that is algorithmic unit so this one is the mainly very important for that one and the floating point integer okay so that is these things are making this one much more better the computer much more better so that what you cannot compute in on in your brain so it can compute that one much more speedily because we already include a lot of chips lot of lot of integrated circuits lot of diodes lot of different types of transistors embedded therein and we ultimately made that one the chip so if you see the history of that one you will see from bigger machines we already made a micro machine which can do virtually so it is not a replacement of the human beings and that is why the software which runs the hardware and software is developed in such a way by the way like that one it it is developed as it is portraying the human thought in some binary form that is what is the perspective of software literacy now taking a little bit of break from it and now i am showing you something like that see uh, as for example right now what is happening in our world is very peculiar peculiar in what sense as you know digital digital documents are having some bit of advantages as well as some bit of disadvantages advantages is that it is not visible and as because it is not visible you cannot even measure its way it's not having its volume 
it's not having its physical appearance so it can be hidden it can be kept in anywhere and it is portable that is what one thing is there but problem is this software or digital documents or digital digital things it is very much gadget dependent and once it is gadget dependent if you do not have the right gadget you just cannot run that one so what i am rather right now trying to say that one in the computer uh, domain so i will come back to this one again so just for a while just to say i'm opening the word and showing you something here now in our computer domain what is happening right now specifically for the software okay. now one thing is now see what we have um, say we have the compiled software and at the same time we have what we are having we are having that one that is a compile software as well as the interpreter software two things are there got compiled one and interpreted two. now let's see under compiled one you can say this thing compiled software so we are having i'm just talking about windows right now i will tell you about this one so is a general idea compile software now you have the koha suppose so uh, this is i am not actually saying only for windows so this is the cross platform or rather um, operating system independent software so we have the koha then we have the this space space we have the disk space and we have you see three other you already told that one evidently and the four i'm saying that one another uh, software is right now people are using and this these are these four are just example don't think that one there's there are only four example now regarding interpreter software it it has few drawbacks so take this one like this so we have this one and now for interpreter software what we have for interpreted software so this is in general so these are not called as software in that sense but they are obviously uh, some software like you see one that is the of the portal see although i am not saying this one as a software but you see this is a mashup of all the things right now what we are doing a mashup of all the things text videos everything so interpreted and the four 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 right now we are having this one that is the 
P W K. So now you see why I started with compiled and interpret software because main problem of compiled software is that these softwares are always this computer so this one these softwares compiled software these are always always require some bit of operating system so they are rather operating system dependent software this compiled software they are uh, they are operating system dependent software OS dependent software so I am going to write it this way okay. they are rather OS dependent whereas whereas this interpreted software they are not they are not uh, OS dependent software They are not OS dependent software. Now, what is this? Here we got that one. So these are not OS dependent. So either you can say that OS independent. OS actually non OS. Dependent or OS independent. OS independent. Right. Now, what does it mean? This means that one, the compiled softwares are always developed on the on on the basis of the operating system or whenever whatever the operating system we are having, the compiled softwares are usually made with the help of that software and an interpreted software these are OS dependent or many a times it is known as cross-platform software now as for example you see uh, you use gmail you used or you use you use gmail you use facebook so see, Gmail and Facebook, both are two different software packages. One is the Gmail, that is the Google Mail. It's a mail program, mail software, but it is hosted on the Google server. And one interface is given to you with your credentials. You can log into it. You can run it. You can see your mails. You can send others mails. You can store. You can make different folders. Even you can archive. So many features are there. So now see why I am saying this one is the interpreted software. Now Google, you can use Google from any kind of machine. Whether you have a MacBook or rather you have the Android operating system based uh, mobile phone, whether you have the Windows 95 or Windows 98 or Windows NT or Windows 10 or you have the Linux or you have the XYZ, whatever it might be, you are able to use any or you are able to use or open Gmail or Facebook or any web software or web enable software by using your browser the only interface that is required that is the browser by using the browser you can open that one but in case of compiled software it is not true once you are having the compiled software you will see that one that is it is not helping you to open that one everywhere now you see whenever mm, <clears throat> you are you are uh, as for so this is what this is the windows 
one. Okay, I do have the Linux installed here also in this machine. So this is only a double booting um, machine. So within this software, within this machine, I'm having the Windows as, as well as Linux. So if I open Linux and right now, you will see that one, the WhatsApp is there. The Scrivener, this one is there. Now you see, whenever I am opening the Scrivener, it is running this one. So you see this one. Scrivener is a very good software for, for uh, students, academic people like that. It not only helps you to develop the write-ups, papers, as well as the stories, novels, whatever you want. As for example, uh, this is what the update is there. Okay. Fine. So it is updating. So only thing is that you can you can install this one and you can run this one from uh, your Windows platform. A Scrivener is not available in Linux platform. The Scrivener is only available in Windows and Mac operating system. It is only available for Apple machines, Macs and Windows. There is no substitute for, uh, there is no alternative version for Scrivener that can be used for this one. So as for example, you see, whenever you are going for a new project, and you will see that one, it will give you, that is what the fiction, if you want to write a novel, short story, non-fiction, like your mm, essays or research paper, APA paper, MLA paper, undergraduate humanistic essays, script writing, even for the movies or radio script, drama, comics script writing. And at the same time, you can have that one, the poems, if you want to write poems, recipe collection. So you can have this one. And just you only have to create and it will, in the left pane, it will create that. So it's not the issue I'm not actually showing you. So now, this is what, what I'm saying. This software is a compiled software, compiled one. And you have the access of Scrivener only from Windows. And you, if you use Linux, you will be unable to use the Scrivener because I purchased this software. But I cannot run that one from Linux platform. I only have to run that one from the Windows platform. But now you see, uh, this is one software and this is known as Ginger. This software, the Ginger, now see, you can say that one. So type a text here or just control V, Kuhadi space. And if you go for checking that one, it will select, see the Koha, possible mistake, and then this space, the same spelling mistake. You can even rephrase this one. So this is what, this is a particular software. Now you see this software, it is also procured. I also purchased this one, the Ginger. So now I can access Ginger from anywhere, whether I am in Linux or whether I am in Windows. So that is why these softwares are rather the interpreted software. It's not compiled one, compiled one. These are the interpreted software and interpreted softwares are usually done with the help of interpreted or interpreting languages, scripting languages. These are known as scripting languages. And these scripting languages, very entry level scripting languages, I think all of you use, that is the your uh, very, 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 very uh, familiar goodie like HTML. So that is the scripting language, HTML. And HTML is rather been sharpened by uh, integrating that one with the active server pages that is the ASP developed by Microsoft and then the PHP pretest type of professional processor then Python Ruby Perl so each and everything you can even integrate or rather you can write that one of its own and most of the software can be interpreted by your browser and that's why and you can develop something like a wrapper of it and inside that one, 
so it can be it can be retrieved by your browser so that you can see everything from the graphical user interface it never it will never complain you whether what kind of it, um, operating systems you are having or you are having the linux you are having the windows so i can't run it don't ever complain so this is the beauty of interpreter software than that of the compiled software now here is the catch right now what is happening in the computer field that is the now what is happening you know in the in our in the computer field now what is a model is rather established model that has already come in the software market of the market what is that that is the subscription based model subscription based model what is subscription based model now this is a magic subscription based model magic in what sense this is nothing but your this was there for a long time this was there for a long time in the software field but people were not uh, that much bothered with that issue as because only one or two software was there which were having this subscription model but right now right now most of the softwares are coming as rather with the subscription based model so let me give you the example so that you will understand that okay so now see this one and you see microsoft and just i'm giving you that one. there's a microsoft office now see this one microsoft office now see this one microsoft office 365 and team now here you see are you getting any such thing that i am talking about the subscription based model yes sir what what is that subscription based uh, model means sir uh, paid software obviously paid for us, for a certain time yes now see here microsoft 365 business basic what is the price 125 user per user per month business 660 rupees per user per month annual commitment that means you have to take at least for one year you cannot say that one i i will use for one month and i will just leave so and then microsoft also this this 5 695 user per month so this is what is one thing the software model okay and at the same time if you want this one that is microsoft office 2019 now see See, previously that was Microsoft. So right now they made this one Microsoft 365, but at the same time they are selling Office also. And here you see Office 19 and long type of you see this one that is a some for business and for home. Okay, so now you see this one again this thing. 
Microsoft 365 family. What is the price? 6199 per year. Perfect for up to six people. That is, you can use family. You can use that one for the six people. You can take a license for one year, 6199. And after one year, you won't be able to use this one anymore. Microsoft will simply block your access. And each and every time, they will check whether you are licensed or not. See, the PowerPoint I am showing to you, e -O -W -E -R, the PowerPoint presentation I am showing to you, rather this one. And see this thing, this place. This is what? This is the licensed one, my Microsoft Office. So I purchase this one. So it is always it is checking whether I am rather a legitimate user for Microsoft or not. So for this one only. So they are always keeping a prying eye whether the version I am using is legal version or not. So previously, previously Microsoft was selling like that one. Microsoft was selling the software like that one. That is, you see, if you go to Amazon, you'll see that one, just you see, A-M-A-Z-O-N, Amazon. And under Amazon, if you write Microsoft Office, now you'll see that one. Microsoft Office Home Student, one-time purchase, email delivery in one hour, lifetime validity, one person, one PC, one man. Only thing what they are not saying that you won't be able to get update or other thing. And you see this one, my 365 personal email delivery. Okay. So, and at the same time, same thing happens with same thing, but people were unaware about that one that is what is happening in their perspective their their uh, software software field but they were accustomed with that one mm, from the previous previous times so this business was there so as for example let me tell you that one and this is what one of the highly acclaimed uh, software now you see here also this model was there from the very beginning, almost all the time, see antivirus, see this one, up to three device, one year. Now, this $23.99. If you want to renew, so in the next year, again, you have to pay some fees. So by this way, this was what, what I'm saying that was a subscription based model. It is not that whenever you are purchasing with Defender software, antivirus program, the software is yours. This software you can use for one year and they will give you the update for one year. But after one year, so you have to pay more. Now you can say that on oh, yes, because the virus is always new virus are coming. And that's sort of why they are saying that one. So that's what sort of they are charging. So it is like your geo charging or rather the SIM card you are having charging. But the same thing is happening for other softwares also as for example let me tell you one example of very good um, software like adobe adobe photoshop have you ever heard of it yes sir yes sir so adobe photoshop you know very very good software for photo design now you see previously you could uh, purchase um, Photoshop. Right now, if you say buy now, now see, what is this? What is the amount? Best value. The amount is Four thousand two hundred and thirty rupees thirty paise per month, inclusive of GST. All apps of Adobe, all apps. 
if you do not require that one you can go for photography now see this one photography it is 797.68 rupees per month now just multiply that one with 12 and then multiply that one how long you want to use it each and every time every month you have to pay now see photoshop what is the price of photoshop per month you have to pay from your pocket 1675 rupees illustrator premiere pro acrobat reader so not reader this is the acrobat main acrobat by which you can develop pdf files so right now a lot of other tools are also available but this one see the price 1196.52 per month so everywhere you are seeing that one they are charging so this is what previously you could buy now let me give you one very important example uh, as for example you see mm, suppose okay, now you see suppose you we are having this one okay this is there the software literacy you are rather going for it and he was saying that one now some i want to deliver this presentation to you i definitely know that one after the comp completion of this uh, uh, see, class you will ask for this ppt now suppose i want to give you the ppt now how i can give you the ppt i can go there i can save as and i can save that one as software literacy dot pptx or rather i can export that one now see the export so pdf document i can give you as a pdf document i can make this one as a video a video and upload that one in youtube i can create the animated gif file i can make this one as a cd package and but there is nothing like i can upload that one in my website that is in website i want to make this one as a web presentation i cannot do that one but there are some tools by which you can change this software into the web based software how just let me show you that one so a bit i'm showing now see here is one particular software i am having that is known as active presenter and this active project presenter you just import powerpoint go to desktop go for the software literacy and you will see that when it is coming okay now only thing is that you just go to html5 preview and you see now it is running in the web okay and with this thing it will run so what you have to do this is a view so only thing is that i have to compile it so now html preview demonstration and then you can go for the demonstration and this is the demonstration now suppose i want to compile it and just you go for this one active presenter now here you see the page so <coughs> now you see the presentation blank project record video project now localize sync everything is there now see go to the export menu and in the export menu you can publish that one in html5 which is the important one and seo rom format this is one particular format for e-learning format i will tell you that one later yeah. so you just click it and browse this one click that one in the desktop and click ok and say do you want to view the output now so just say no and then come here now it becomes the software literacy this one one particular but that it is export okay see wrong settings let me see What is it? Settings, test sheet, tutorial sheet. Okay, demo sheet. Fine. So these are the software. Now you see 
So one is that, and yes, now see demo chip. So these are the files, the demo already there, and this is the practice, and this is the demonstration and tutorial. Okay, let me open it now. Export, extract to desktop tutorial. Now see the tutorial is here. Now go to HTML5. Just click this one. Okay. Okay. Let me compile it because this thing is like now the API is not available. So let me compile that one. Export. Export. Yes. Now just HTML5. So only thing demonstration. Browse. Desktop. Okay. Okay. Yes. Now see this is what our software has already been developed. So if you see, if you want the desktop, from desktop it is running. Demo tutorial. How? 